Hi everyone, this is Kalyan Kumar and welcome to Chemistry Tutorials, your one-stop channel for a variety of chemistry videos covering all parts of chemistry, physical, organic and inorganic. We are currently doing the lesson General Organic Chemistry and I've already made four parts in this. The first part was about the hybridization of carbon and inductive effect. Part two was about resonance effect. Part three was aromaticity in which I made four videos and part 4 was hyperconjugation and today is the turn of part 5 of 13 and this is named as electromeric effect. Now electromeric effect is an effect which is very different from the previous effects that we have done namely inductive resonance and hyperconjugation. Now inductive resonance and hyperconjugation are effects which exist permanently in a molecule which are there in the molecule right when the molecule is formed till the time when the molecule is destroyed. It remains forever. Whereas electromeric effect is an effect that does not exist in a molecule but comes into play when a part of the same molecule or another molecule comes close to this particular molecule. So the electromeric effect happens only when there is an instigator only when there is another molecule or probably a part of the same molecule that comes very close to, to this molecule due to which electronic changes occur. So we call electromeric effect as a sudden effect. On top of that, it is also known as a temporary effect. That is primarily because if the attacking reagent is removed, the molecule goes back to the state in which it was earlier in existence. So changes will only occur if you do not remove the reagent. If you remove it, it goes back to its initial state. So it occurs due to the presence of it, you remove it and you will be able to get the molecule back into the same situation. Therefore, this is the basic idea about electromeric effect. Let's get into this in detail and we will see a few animations that will help us understand how electromeric effect takes place. So let's get into the definition of electromeric effect. This is a little tedious one. But I think uh, you'll be able to figure out once I start explaining the stuff. Electromeric effect refers to a molecular polarizability effect occurring by an intramolecular electron displacement, sometimes called the conjugative mechanism or and which was previously termed as tautomeric mechanism, characterized by the substitution of one electron pair for another within the same atomic octet of electrons. A very complicated definition but basically what it means is that a reagent comes and it could probably bring its own electron pair and if it does then this electron pair attacks one of the atoms that atom would transfer another electron pair to another atom so this is a displacement of electrons and it is intramolecular because the electron goes from one atom to the other so this type of polarizability is electromeric effect. This effect is shown by those compounds which contain multiple bonds. Invariably you will find that molecules which have multiple bonds are the ones which are capable of showing electromeric effect. If a molecule does not have any pi electron, you will not be able to observe electromeric effect in those situations. So multiple bond is required. This effect will remain as long as the attack attacking reagent is present. As soon as the reagent is removed, the polarized molecule will come back to its original state. This is exactly what I talked about. So a molecule comes, some changes occur in this molecule and the moment the molecule is withdrawn, this comes back to its original state. It's a temporary effect. It is a sudden effect due to the presence of other molecules or sometimes groups present in the same molecule. If the reagent is not removed, then it causes permanent change in the nature of the molecule. In fact, it is electromeric effect which is responsible for reactions to take place. So a molecule is there, a reagent comes, electromeric effect happens and if the reagent is not removed, then it will start attacking this molecule and it will finally cause permanent change in the nature of the molecule and which leads to new products, which is of course reaction. Responsible for reactions between neutral molecule and charged ion or between two neutral molecules. Now sometimes we do wonder that if there is a positive ion and there is a negative ion, we can clearly understand that they will attract each other and they will form bond. Makes sense. 
So reaction between a positively charged ion and a negatively charged ion is okay to understand. But sometimes it looks a little weird to see how two neutral molecules react. What is it that makes two neutral molecules react with each other since both are neutral? So what is it that attracts them together? It is explained by electromagnetic effect. And sometimes you have a neutral molecule and a charged ion. So how does a neutral molecule attach to a charged ion? Electromagnetic effect. So electromagnetic effect is the reason why reactions between neutral molecules takes place or neutral molecule and an ion takes place. Electromagnetic effect can be classified into plus E and minus E effects based on the direction of transfer of the electron pair. Now, if you find that electrons from the molecule are going towards the attacking ion or the attacking molecule, it is known as plus E because electrons are being given to the attacking group. If electrons go away from the attacking group, we call it minus E. The molecule is withdrawing electrons away from the attacking molecule. So plus E refers to when the group that is coming is taking the electron pair from the neutral molecule and minus E when the electron pair goes away from the attacking molecule. The addition of acids to alkenes is an example of the plus E effect. After the transfer takes place, the reagent gets attached to the atom where the electrons have been transferred to. I'm going to explain this using a simple animation about how a plus E effect takes place. So let's go ahead and see the animation. So this is the alkene and this is a group BE. Now this B stands for base, E stands for electrophile. Electrophile is a species that is deficient in electrons and base is electron rich. So just imagine that this atom B is more electronegative than this atom E. Now the fact of the matter is how do two neutral molecules react? Well the logic is this. Now this pi bond is basically made up of electrons. And this bond is also made up of electrons. As you can see electrons are here, electrons are here. Now this is delta plus and this is delta minus. So what happens is this pi electron cloud would attract this E delta plus. So the orientation of BE becomes in such a way that E orients itself towards the electron pair and B orients itself away from the electron pair. And since this is delta plus and these are electrons, this entire molecule will get pulled by this alkene, the pi electron of the alkene towards the alkene. Now, as this molecule comes towards this, this electron repels these electrons. And therefore, as the molecule comes down, these electrons will slowly get pushed towards B. And the closer it comes, more would these electrons be pushed towards B. Eventually, when the molecule is very near to the alkene, the electrons completely go towards B and the bond breaks heterolytically, making E as positive and B as negative. So, as you can see, it is coming towards and as you see, as it is coming towards it, the electrons are pushed towards B. Let's see this again. The electrons are pushed towards B as the molecule comes closer to the alkene. That makes E as plus and B as minus. Now, this E plus could go to any one of these carbon atoms. It could go to either this carbon atom or this carbon atom. Let us assume it goes to this carbon atom. As it goes to this carbon atom, it starts withdrawing electrons from this carbon atom. This carbon atom starts pulling these pi electrons because these are weak. Eventually, the pulling becomes so great that this pi bond breaks in favor of this carbon. These two electrons come to this carbon and this carbon forms a bond with this E plus using these pair of electrons. It goes like this. As this happens, the E loses its positive, a bond is formed and the carbon becomes positive because this carbon has lost the pi electron. And there is, of course, this B minus having this lone pair. So it attracts the B minus, forms a bond with B minus, and reaction is complete. So two neutral molecules are able to react like this. So let's see this once again, so that you can get a fair idea as to how these reactions happen. So we were here. These were electrons. These were electrons, 
BE comes closer, electron goes to B, E becomes plus, E plus comes towards carbon, carbon pulls the lone, these uh, pi electrons, forms a bond, carbon becomes plus, attracts the B minus, forms a bond, both lose their charge and the reaction is complete. So that was the plus E effect. Now let's see what is a minus E effect. The minus E effect can be found in reactions such as addition of nucleophiles to carbonyl compounds. In these reactions, the electron pair moves away from the attacking reagent. Now, when a negatively charged reagent approaches the molecule seeking partially positive carbon, it causes instantaneous shift of an electron pair of the CO group towards the more electronegative oxygen atom. Now, in carbonyl compounds like aldehydes and ketones, there is a C double bond O. O is more electronegative, C is less electronegative, carbon has delta plus and O has delta minus. A nucleophile, that is something which is rich in electron, tries to seek the positive carbon. As it comes closer and closer to the carbon, the pi bond of the C double bond O moves slowly towards the oxygen, just like as we saw in the case of alkene. So the nucleophile comes towards carbon, the pi bond goes towards oxygen, eventually the pi bond completely shifts towards oxygen, carbon becomes plus and the nucleophile is able to attack this carbon atom. The carbon thus becomes deprived of its share and acquires a positive charge. Meanwhile, oxygen takes complete control of the electron pair and becomes negatively charged. Therefore, in the presence of attacking reagent, one bond is lost and this negatively charged attacking reagent links to the carbon having positive charge. So let's have a look. This is the carbonyl compound. As you can see, carbon is delta plus O is delta negative. There is a nucleophile which is rich in electron having an electron pair. As this comes close to the carbon atom, look what happens. These are electrons of course. As the nucleophile comes towards carbon, the lone pair move towards oxygen. The nucleophile hasn't come completely. It has come very close which is able to push the electrons completely towards O. Now the carbon becomes completely plus, O becomes completely negative and now the nucleophile can attack and form a bond. And the nucleophile loses a negative charge and eventually a bond is formed. So that is how we are going to get the electromeric effect in a carbonyl compound. Now that we have done what an electromeric effect actually is, let's just compare the electromeric effect with respect to inductive effect. Difference between inductive and electromeric effect. So we have inductive effect on one side, electromeric effect on the other side. An inductive effect is basically polarization of a sigma bond due to the electronegativity difference between the bonded atoms or that of the atoms attached to these atoms. Whereas electromeric effect is the complete shift of pi bond electron pair of a double bond or a triple bond to one of the atoms joined by it in the presence of a suitable electrophilic or nucleophilic reagent. So the first major difference is that inductive effect is a weak polarization of sigma bond. Electromeric effect is a complete shift of pi bonds. In inductive effect, the, the reason the effect occurs is because of the electronegativity difference between the atoms forming the bond or the electronegativity difference between the atoms which are attached to these atoms. Whereas, inductive, whereas electromeric effect occurs only in the presence of a reagent. It is a permanent effect, inductive, and electromeric is a temporary effect because when we remove the reagent, you will find that the effect stops and the molecule goes back to being what it was. Inductive effect always exists in the molecule, does not need another species, only occurs in the molecule when a suitable reagent is present. Inductive defines the nature of the molecule and electromeric effect changes the nature of the molecule and responsible for reactions. Inductive effect is the reason why something is more acidic or something is less acidic, why something behaves in a particular way, whereas electromeric effect completely changes the nature of the molecule because it is electromeric effect due to which reactions actually take place. So that is the end of this video, electromeric effect. This was part 5 of 13. The next video that we will be talking about would be about understanding what intermediates and transition states are. That would be part 6. And uh, in case you haven't subscribed to this channel, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. I post a lot of chemistry videos, not only the lesson videos, I also put, uh, put in experiments that we perform in the lab. So 
it is going to be really helpful for you if you are a chemistry student or even if you are a chemistry instructor. So if you haven't subscribed to this, uh, consider subscribing. If you like this video, do hit the like button. And remember, after you subscribe, please ensure that you do hit the bell notification on top of your YouTube channel because that will help you get the intimation of the videos that I post right on time. With that, I take your leave. This is Kalyan Kumar signing off. Have a great day. Goodbye and thank you for watching.